And then when you think about a person as high profile in this league as Justin Fields, you need him to be um, a complete, I, well, almost a completely different player this year than last year. And if you take all of his rushing yards and you decrease that by two thirds and you increase his passing yards significantly, that's what really is going to make the Bears a better team. You know, so I don't think that we're talking about the Bears leading the league and rushing if, if they didn't have a guy like Justin. So I, I'm interested to see what course of action they take to make sure Justin is the best that he can possibly be, but still keep the running game in place. Is that realistic, Tom? Two thir- you would like to see them reduce his rushing yards by two-thirds? I, I would only if he is sees the architect of the passing offense more efficiently. Um, and, you know, I've talked about it a couple times, and you go back and you look at all those sacks that T. Waddle talked about that Justin took last year. And a lot of those sacks are preventable just by an easy outlet read to a running back or a tight end or just, you know, having confidence in the construction of your pocket to make sure that you're still looking downfield to a, a, a receiver, not an escape hatch. And so, and you know what, I don't, I don't think that there was anything more exciting on an NFL field last year than what Justin Fields could possibly do to you defensively. But ultimately, if this is going to be a quarterback that we're talking about in the league for 10 or 12 years, it's going to become, it's going to be because he's come the passer that he's capable of being. And when I watched Justin over the time of him being here, his long ball accuracy is as good as anybody's in the league. And now just the confidence to make sure that he understands what he's seeing to make an accurate, competent throw, that's what's going to benefit the Bears. Uh, Tom, you have a trained eye, obviously. What, 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 do you, what have you seen from this team in the voluntary OTAs? And then what did you see today? You know, Tom, you know, during OTAs, I, I rarely spend very much time watching the upper body. I watch the, the legs and the feet of the ability of the positions they play. I watch a guy like Darnell Wright. He's got the ability to shift and readjust into uh, consecutive moves by a pass rusher. He's got the bendability in his legs that he can get underneath and earn leverage against a shorter defensive lineman. If you go and you look at the feet and the redirect of defensive linemen, you know, can they redirect to a second move after an offensive lineman stalemates them at the line of scrimmage? And then you watch the feet and the ability of TJ Edwards and Edmonds, and you look at the way that these guys can move at the linebacker position as long as they're protected by a quality defensive line. So, um, you know, again, it's not – you know, I'll, I will I will take all that time when they're in full pads and they're doing that stuff at training camp when the upper body has to has to meet the feet. Uh, but, yeah, I, I've just spent a lot of time and especially with the defensive backs. And when you get a chance to watch and you know this better, better than I do, when you get to watch just the, the feet of a defensive back and they talk about, oh, can he swivel his hips? Can he turn and run? But can he do it with balance, uh, you know, with his feet underneath him? And that's kind of the fun things that I've, I've been paying attention to more throughout OTAs and first day of minicamp than some of the upper body elements that are going to be important during training camp. Was there more you could grab from today, Tom? Because I know it for, Jeff has told, and I've learned a lot from you uh, on how pissed off you can get through some of these OTAs. It, it's, it's awesome. Um, was there more that you could grab from today than some of the OTAs? Um, you know, honestly, um, timing and tempo, I'm still a little concerned about because, you know, when, when you call a play in the huddle and whatever, if you're a receiver, if you're an offensive lineman, whatever the catchphrase you're listening to in that terminology, you know, the quarterback has to understand every single word that he's saying out of his mouth and how it pertains to the other 10 guys jobs. And they also was saying an audible inside that same huddle call. And he has to remember all of, all of those responsibilities too. So, you know, am I sitting there going, Oh my God, we're, we're looking at the Kansas city chiefs of two years ago, or we're looking at, you know, Peyton Manning when he brought, you know, his, his traits and his talents into Denver. I don't think we're watching that yet, but um, I, I do think that 
getting ready to get into training camp when it comes around that, like Luke Getze said it the other day at the podium, they have to be able to hit the ground running. And I think if they're going to be able to hit the ground running, they have to finish this uh, series of offseason workouts the next two days and have a positive passing offense, have a positive seven-on-seven, have a positive two-minute drill where the exactly of what they're saying in the huddle is what they're doing after the ball is snapped. Tom, what's your take on, on where Darnell Mooney is in terms of his rehab and his availability going into training camp and your thoughts on Chase Claypool at this point as well? You know, to me, Darnell Mooney, I, I, I don't even want to see him around the field until training camp begins. And then if, you know, is he to that ramped up stage where he's ready to go? Or did he, does he still need a couple of practice just to get acclimated with his feet on the, the soil again? But I still think Darnell Mooney has incredible work habits. Uh, he has desire to be the best of the best, and that's what I, I expect out of him. Chase Claypool, you know, when you hear when he's talked about at the podium during the offseason, he's in a better frame of mind. He has a better understanding of his existence inside the facility. He's got better friendships and bigger and you know longer developed relationships with the offensive coaches and quarterbacks and such. So, you know, if they can take and um, use the size, which you know the reason he was brought here is got that six four plus frame, just like all the other guys. I mean, he's got to be um, a big time contributor, not only. You know, everywhere on the field, in the red zone, in the middle of the field, on third down scenarios, he's got to be able to be a, a weapon that Justin can rely and count on. Are you concerned, though? I mean, like, you've talked about availability and about working at this. He was nicked up when, when they got him and, and, and tweaked some stuff. He has not been available throughout a lot of the OTAs, and it looks like he's going to miss a lot of the mini camp. You know, I, it's, it's hard to say I'm concerned, you know, six and a half weeks out of training camp. I, I'm really not because there's, you know, some guys, you know, just don't want to just don't uh, go through OTAs or go through go through mini camps and stuff like that. And they just allow him. They're not allowing him just making sure that he's 100 percent ready to go when training camp gets here. And it's kind of like the Darnell, you know, the way I feel about Darnell, I, as long as he's ready for training camp. I don't care what they're doing right now because uh, if you ever meet anybody in your life that is not a fan of no pad football yeah. and especially no pad indoor football, <laughs> it's even worse. So I'm not a fan of it. I don't care who's not there, but I, I, I will care who's there day one of full pads, even if they go through the first couple days with no pads on and they're not out there yet. But when it becomes full pad and things are for real and you're developing game plans, then, yeah, I, I expect them to be there. Okay, uh, that's fair. That being said then, too, so this is all indoor stuff and this is all slower football. Um, is DJ more better than you thought even you expected him to be? <laughs> that's funny, Sylvie, because I was thinking about that today. And um, I want him to be a part of the passing game. I don't want him to be exclusively the passing game. And I like, and I like this, the, this development of this relationship that he and Justin are building throughout the course of OTAs and mini camp and, you know, carry through the training camp. But when you talk about Chase and EQ St. Brown and Robert Tunyon and Cole Komet and the running backs that can catch, everybody's got to be a part of the offense. I don't think this is going to be an offense where DJ is going to come here and make the offense one dimensional. So I, that's probably where my concern is. But when I, after they made, they got the uh, DJ in the trade, the first person I talked to was Ron Revere. And we had talked about this and he said so many complimentary things about DJ and his work habit, the way he fits in the locker room, the way he'll develop a relationship with the quarterback. And I love hearing all those things because you can have that positive chemistry rub off on other guys inside that locker room. So I'm as um, as excited about a receiver around here as that I've been in the course of an off season. And um, I, I really respect everything he's done from the minute he's got here. Hey, he's just different. I, that's the way I, I mean, he's different than most guys. He, he, there's no wasted motion in his route running. He's a pro. Uh, I think as much as he'll be beneficial to that offense on the field, I think he is a valuable, valuable asset inside that offensive huddle. 
he's your best player on offense. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm but you know, excited. the thing that scares me, Thomas, don't I don't I don't want to create a scenario where you're waiting for him to get open. Yes, when you have to understand what your prediction is, where your vulnerabilities lie, and who is your number one outlet or who is your number one receiver according to all the information you just said in the huddle so uh, i'll do res- all the respect in the world for dj but again when you know they talked about bringing size in here at the wide re- wide receiver position in the way that those guys can contribute you know every play doesn't have to be a touchdown but you got to get first down well and, and that's where i was going next is uh, a i would like to get you because i don't think i've had this conversation with you your thoughts on Luke Getze, I'm a fan, just, you know, uh, uh, just to be 100% out front. I, I Obviously, it's tough to be great every Sunday, but I, I liked how he matured as a play caller and what he did to put guys in position to take advantage of what they do well. Your thoughts on Luke and what he needs to get better at in year two running this offense? Ah, you know, Luke's got a heck of a, you know, a great deal of experience and, you know, living a little, living a, the good life when you do have a guy like Aaron Rodgers, it kind of, you know, it, it, it's, it's different type. It's different when you're coaching Aaron Rodgers and you're de- coaching a developing quarterback like Justin Fields with the traits he has. You know what? I, I was like, I was talking to Jeff about this the other day and just to analogize it. Um, so they got that game show, uh, is it like guess that tune or name that tune name that tune okay so they get a couple of notes and then they know what the song is i would like to know through the eyes and the ears of luke getsy are he and justin on that same uh are they on that same rhythm when he's calling a play so when luke luke calls two or three words into the play can justin finish it without luke saying it and i think that's when you're really going to see the understanding, the development, and just the confidence that Justin can play with. And um, so I, I think that's kind of interesting for Luke to come in to a newbie like Justin is rather than having a guy that's been around a decade already and then, you know, he's coaching you as much as you're coaching him. Isn't it beneficial, though, like for both of them? Like, Justin's going to be in the same offense now for consecutive years for the first time since Ohio State. And Luke now knows the tendencies of his quarterback. It isn't going to be 100% seamless and perfect, but I would think the familiarity will benefit the both of them this year. Oh, it's got to. Yeah. It, 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 it's got to because any of us that have played football that you when you get that repetitiveness in yeah. the same offense over a period of time, and that's repetition is the key to success on the offensive side of it. So whether it's Luke knowing Justin better per down and distance, he knows the talent around him better, and then he also knows where is Justin the most comfortable, what protection does he like the most. What is he going to understand going to the line of scrimmage? Oh, I have max protection, so I don't have to be reading where blitzes could possibly come from. All those little minute details of playing quarterback, Luke has got – he's a quarterback in his own background. So I'm I'm sure that he's getting to know Justin is, is – you know, as well as he needs to in order to get him set up for his second year in this offense. So are you hanging out in the Chicago area until training camp or you go back to Hawaii? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take an off. No, I'm here to stay. I'm here to stay. This is the best part of the year being around Chicagoland area. And, uh, uh, you know, just just look forward to getting ready for camp to see what's, you be uh, in what's the up room? and coming. You going to be in the weight room? Every day. Every day. Okay. I won't. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> not at this age. He'll be on the golf course. Nah, I'll be somewhere, but it won't be in the weight room. That's for sure. Tom, we appreciate you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime, guys. Good talking to you. There you, you go, too. Tom Thayer. It's a. It is such a joy to have Thayer and Joniak as a part of our team, and to be the home of the Bears, and to get to talk to these guys now well, after years of watching them from afar, and now be teammates from with them. They're there every day. Yeah, and Tom has access that is second to none so not only does he have a great football you know uh, resume he's also now he's somebody that is at practice every day has access to these guys and uh his insight is going to be invaluable for us it's incredible it's just truly great stuff